Okay, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I am going to be doing a 10,000 mile review on my 2021 Ram 2500. As you can see here in this middle, this middle uh, photo here, this is a, uh, a snapshot of my uh, mileage using my Uconnect app, uh, which is great. Uh, I love having this app. And as you can see here, I have 10,666 miles on the truck. Um, so bottom line up front, there are I, no issues, really. I, there's nothing to really talk about uh, in terms of issues. Like, example, forums are typically created because someone's got a question about an issue or something or whatever, right? I don't really have much to report because uh, I've not really experienced any issues with the truck. She's been great. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, so if, if that satisfies uh, your curiosity on the truck, then you can end the video now. Starting now, moving forward to the rest of this video, I'm going to break down in more detail. Um, and I'm going to talk about a few things, as you can see here to the right. I'm going to talk about the engine, transmission, interior, my MPGs, DEF consumption, what kind of oil I use, and other, as in other random stuff about the truck. So let's start with the engine. Uh, engine, no issues. Uh, it doesn't burn any oil, which is great. Uh, and yeah, I, mean, I can't complain. There's there's nothing to complain about in terms of the engine. No issues, and, but there shouldn't be. It's, it's a Cummins, right? Uh, transmission, the 68 RFE. I'm very happy with this with this truck and this tra and, and the transmission. Uh, this is I, I want to say this is my what fifth Ram, right? Let's see, I had a 99, 2011, a 16, an 18, a 19. Oh, this, I'm sorry, this is my sixth Cummins diesel. My fifth with the 68 RFE. And in previous years past, right, in, besides the 2019, um, the 68 RFE has always been known to be kind of a clunky-ish transmission. I mean, it's just clunky. It's got its quirks. It's it can be reliable for some and not reliable for others, you know, but I think it all depends on how you drive it. If you beat on the truck, if you beat on anything man-made, you're going to break it, period. You take care of it, it'll take care of you, you know. Um, and in 2019, they revised the 68 RFE and it became a lot better, a lot smoother. Um, but there were still some issues. Uh, my 2019 had a recall, uh, the, the valve body recall. Uh, but this 2021, uh, this the 68 RFE is great. I don't know what else they did to it between 2019 and now, but it's great. The, the truck is really smooth. Um, it, the transmission isn't clunky at all. I'm Not to me. And look, I, I've owned six Ram Cummins, five of those have had the 68 RFE. Uh, I'm very familiar with the 68 RFE and its clunkiness, right? Uh, and this truck is great. I mean, dare I say, it kind of drives like the 2020 Ford I had with the 10-speed. Um, it's very smooth. And I, 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 I'm, I'm impressed. So, um, and yes, it is stock. Going back to the engine, truck stock. It will remain stock. Um, so yeah, so engine transmission, no issues. I'm very happy with that. Okay, so let's move on to the interior. As you know, this is a limited, so it's the top of the line, and the interior is phenomenal. Well, what can I say? Come on. If anyone has sat in a Ram, the higher trim levels, even a Bighorn, even a Bighorn interior is better than a King Ranch interior, okay? The quality of materials used is better. Uconnect is better than Sync 3, okay? Is better than the B&O sound system, whatever, right? Um, this limited, the sound system, this Harman Carmen or whatever, I'm not familiar with sound systems, so you'll have to forgive me on that, but the sound system in the RAM is far better than any Ford, Sync 4, Sync 3, B&O, Sony, sound system, whatever. Ram blows everyone else out the water. 
in terms of their interior fit and finish, quality of material. Look, they use real leather, real wood, um, real, um, you know, like aluminum trim pieces, right? Uh, now, across the board, whether it's Ford, Ram, GM, Toyota, they all have some form of, of plastic in the truck. You just can't get away from that. But it's the amount of plastic, right? Ford uses a lot of hard plastics. But the Ford interior is definitely better than the GM interior. GM is just bad. I mean, just bad, period. I, you, you, period. Even their Denali, give me a break. Their Denali is like the equivalent of like uh, a tradesman, in, in my view. They're just, they're just bad, awful. Um, the, the Ford beats the GM hands down. And then Ram is still top, is still top of the line. The way the 12 inch screen is laid out in the Ram is far better. The Ford, it looks like the 12 inch screen is just kind of like plain. Now in the F-150s, it looks better. But in the Super Duties, we're comparing Super heavy duty trucks, right? Interior, right? It's kind of looks like it's kind of out of place. It, it kind of, when you look at the, tw the, the 12 inch screen they have, it, it kind of like has this little wing that curls up. If you know what I'm talking about, if you, if you go from the windshield all the way to the, to the windshield and move you all the way back to where the screen is, the screen has kind of comes up and it just doesn't look good. And you know, the new Toyota Tundras, right? They're 12, 14 inch screen, whatever it is. It's like someone took an iPad and just placed it on the dash. It, that's what it looks like. It doesn't blend. It doesn't flow into the interior, if that makes sense. Like Toyota's just bad. And Toyota, have you seen the new interior? It's awful. Hard, fake wood, plastic everywhere. Come on, give me a break. There, it's just Toyota. You still missed the ball with with the with your new truck. Um, and I've been watching those videos. Thank God for uh, what's that uh, pickup truck SUV talk, right? He was calling them out, being like, yeah, Toyota, what is wrong with you? Look, I just want to get in the truck and drive. I don't want to sit there and punch in a bunch of crap, and then I can't use my key fob and blah, blah, blah. Like, come on. Toyota, really? What's wrong with you? That, that's what you get when you with the, the, the top 1% of designing something, and that, that's how they want to do it. The average Joe don't want that. Anyway, that's a little rant. Uh, but the Ram interior, the best, period. No one can question that. No one. I don't care. Look, I own three Fords. Okay? Um, this isn't like a, a Ram fanboy, whatever, right? It, it's just a fact. Ram into the Ram interior is far better than anything on the market today in terms of trucks. Okay? Now, the new F-150 interior, pretty nice. I gotta admit, pretty nice. Too bad that didn't get translated into their super duties. I don't know what's wrong with Ford, but even that new Ford interior for the F-150s, uh, not as good as the Ram. Sorry. So you, you, you don't even have real wood on the steering wheel. Like, what's up with that? Come on. Um, I don't even think Ford uses real wood, to be honest. Um, they might, but I don't think so. Um, so anyways, uh, the Ram interior is great. I don't have any issues with my interior. Uh, the fit and finish is tight. Uh, the, the touch screen, I, I have no issues. I haven't had any issues. My 19, I did have an issue where I got put in reverse. Sometimes the front camera wouldn't work. Um, you know, but I would just kind of give it a little hit and then it'll, you know, it'll work. But uh, in terms of this 2021, no issues with Uconnect, with the screen, with the, the Uconnect app. Um, no issues at all. None whatsoever. Uh, no squeaking or anything like that. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to think if there's any issues. I mean, uh, I will say the seats are not as comfortable as the Ford. Ford has some really comfortable seats. Uh, Ram, the leather, because Ram uses real leather, okay? Uh, and they, it's not just, like, thin pieces of leather. They, they use, like, thick leather. I don't know what kind of leather they use, but it's thick. And it, it they're kind of tough. The seats are kind of tough. They're not as soft as the Ford interior. Um... And GM interior is also really, their, their seats are, are also really comfortable. Um, so if there is a flaw here, I would say that in terms of seat comfort, 
the Ford is better than the Ram in terms of sitting in the seat. Because Ram, their seat's a little bit tough. Uh, but other than that, like, no issues at all. Uh, okay, diesel exhaust fluid consumption. Oh, I'm sorry, mileage, fuel mileage. Look, you've seen my fuel mileage videos. I'm getting phenomenal fuel mileage in this truck. But granted, I'm doing like 65 or slower, but I'm doing great. Even when I'm not doing a highway run and I'm doing 70, 75, I'm still getting really good fuel mileage. Anything for me, 18 and up is green. It's all green. Uh, anything 15 to 17 miles to the gallon, that's amber. Anything underneath 15, like 14 and below, that's all red. So far, it's all been green, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, okay, diesel exhaust fluid consumption. This truck is doing better than my 19. The, the 19 Ram that I had, I felt like I was going through two and a half gallons. There was two and a half gallon jugs every like 2,000 miles. I mean, it was ridiculous. Uh, I'll give this to Ford. Ford's diesel exhaust fluid consumption is way better. Like I could go easily 7,500, 10,000 miles before having to uh, feel like I need to fill up. You know, but they have a bigger tank too. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, but with the Ford, I, I, I feel like I can go a little bit longer. Um, but granted, that's like 7,500 miles or 10,000 miles, and, and that's using two, two and a half jugs. When I do fill up, it's two, two and a half jugs. So five gallons usually. Uh, in this 2021, I'm finding that I'm getting roughly around 2,500 to 3,000 miles uh, on a two and a half gallon jug, maybe three gallons. So two and a half gallon plus half a gallon, so three gallons. So it's not bad. It, it, and I, tar I try to fill up at half. I don't like letting it go to empty. Many reasons for that. Um, but I, I fill up at half a tank. Now, if I, and uh, you know, we know that the diesel exhaust fluid tank on the Rams are much smaller than the Fords. It's like five gallons or five and a half gallons. So it's, it's not much. Um, so I, I'm, I'm content with that. I'm happy with it. I, I feel like I'm getting, it's better than the 19. Uh, but I, so I, I want to say this, my 18 and my 16 Ram, I was getting probably the same diesel exhaust fluid mileage as the Fords. The 19 and newer, it, it uses a little more diesel exhaust fluid. Um, but hey, i rather use more ex diesel exhaust fluid than use more EGR. And these newer trucks do use a lot less EGR than the 18 and the 2013 through 18 models. Um, but yeah, so diesel exhaust fluid consumption, I'm happy. Two and a half gallons to three gallons every two and a half, 2,500, 3,000 miles-ish. Uh, I'm 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 okay with that. Um, okay, so oil. We're talking about oil. I have been using um, Chevron Dello 680F. Uh, I did my first oil change at 5,500 miles ish, and so far so good. Um, when I reach 15,000 miles, I will do uh, an oil change. That will be 10,000 miles on the oil, and I'm going to send a sample into Blackstone. Now, I want to say this, the Chevron Dello 680F, when you do a TBN analysis on this oil, it's not going to read much because their additive package is completely different from the typical uh, oil on the market today, whether it's conventional or synthetic. The 680F has super low amounts of phosphorus and zinc, your anti-wear additives, right? They use a lot more um, of different um, additive package uh, to compensate for the, you know, less amount of zinc and uh, phosphorus. So doing a TBN test, it's not going to be much. It may even be one. One guy did on Turbo Diesel Register and had like 6,000 miles on the oil and it had TBN showing of one. Well, I called Chevron and I brought that up to their uh, attention and they said that, yeah, it's, when oil analysis labs, doesn't matter if it's Blackstone or other analysis labs, they're not a they're not familiar with the new additive package of this oil. They're, they may they may know of this oil, but they're not, they don't have the testing equipment to test their oil in terms of their additive package because it's completely different. I even called Blackstone Labs and they confirmed this, 
that they understand that this is a radically different oil and that testing for TBN is not going to be accurate because they don't use phosphorus or zinc. I mean, they, it's, it, there's a little bit, but like really little, <laughs> like very, very little. Okay. That's why Chevron Dello can tout a um, sulfur content, or ash content of 0.4 instead of, I'm sorry, 0 0.04 instead of 0.1, right? Um, or whatever, 1%, one, 1 it's less, it's 60% less. So that's huge, um, 0 0.04, 0 0.4, something like that. But anyways, it's 60% it's less sulfated ash in the new Chevron Dello 600ADF than any other conventional oil. And the reason for that is to help the exhaust system. Um, when the truck goes in the regen, there's less ash that accumulates at the end of every regen. Um, I also, going back to deep diesel exhaust fuel consumption, I have been using, from the very beginning, um, Blue Def Platinum. And um, we'll see how it goes. I mean, maybe at 50,000 miles, I may take the diesel exhaust fluid nozzle in the injector off, and we'll see if there's any crud built up on it. Um, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I, when I left the dealership, I didn't even, add, I, I did not have them fill the diesel exhaust fluid tank. Whatever the truck came with, it was like quarter tank, of diesel exhaust fluid. When I got home, I, I filled it up immediately with um, Blue Def Platinum. So anyways, um, but yeah, so oil, and I'll do another separate video on that, uh, talking to the, you know, and look, the best place to get information is directly from the source. So don't just rely on old thinking and old technology. Call Chevron, ask them about their oil. Call Blackstone Labs. I, t I did today, as a matter of fact. And I spoke to them, I spoke to both companies um, with my concerns about the low TBN number. And um, I I'm still gonna use this oil. Yeah, I think it's a great oil so far. I mean, I haven't had any issues, right? So we'll see, and it meets Cummins specs. It's a CK4 oil and it meets Cummins CES 286. So. Um, or 2000, uh, 20,086, you know, 200, 200, 0, 86. So it meets that requirement, um, which supersedes the 281. Just want to point that out. Uh, so yeah, no issues there. Uh, so we'll go to other, really nothing to, nothing else to complain or talk about. Um, the only thing aftermarket, which isn't depicted in this photo, um, I've I've added WeatherTech mud flaps, and obviously I had I had my windows tinted. But other than that, nothing else. Um, I'm thinking about doing a Lear um, truck cap uh, on the truck. I, I haven't decided yet, but I might. Um, I think truck caps. I think truck caps are uh, hideous, but. In terms of keeping my stuff locked and safe and if I ever you know want to go camping or whatever and I don't want to have to take a camper um, I can sleep in the back of the truck you know um, or for any other emergency purposes um, you know it, it, I think it'd be good to have uh, put dogs back there not worry about them you know jumping out of the bed so it's a possibility I might do that um, but other than that yeah other than the, than the weather tech mud flaps and the Tinting, um, truck has been great. No issues uh, to report. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can see right here, this is uh, all systems passed, you know, but this was 12 days ago. Um, but there's nothing really to report on the truck. So well, that's it. So we'll see you in the next video. Um, I still, I'm still planning to do a video where I'm just browsing through forums and doing a reaction video to comments, you know, because there's always uh, people, see, you know, we've got a lot of keyboard warriors out there. Uh, I've been doing X, Y, and C for X number, blah, 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 blah. So it must be right. You know, uh, screw new technology. Okay, you can get rid of your iPhone or your Android and go back to a rotary. Okay, so, um, <laughs> yeah. So anyways, that's it for this video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.